how does the market typically perform like after a rate hike, right? So here's what we found out. From 1984, moving on, the market has done 9%, and this is in a one-year, this is in a one-year time frame. 84, 9.9%, 89, 13.9%, 95 to 98, it got 22% averaged from 2001 to 2000, 2001, where am I at? Yep, 98, yep, 2001 minus 10%, 2007 minus 17%, and then 2019, 8%. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you had two down years from 84 to 2019 in those rate cutting cycles, you only had two negative years, right? So I like to show y'all the data because again, like, my spiritual bro told me earlier, if we can be equipped with the data, we can know how to navigate and move. This, this is what's giving us tools. Tools, remember the other data we had from last week was said what? We gave on the time to buy. Understanding, that's what I call about giving us the tools, is understanding how the market typically performs. Now, here's what we do know. The market doesn't always what? Repeat itself, but it does what? Run, right? And so if we have an idea of what's supposed to happen, we can say, oh, okay, based on this, I got, a good, I got a good chance of putting the market where? In my favor. So also, index from 2004 to September, um, just up, we see the S&P is up almost 20%. We see corporate bonds up. We see gold futures up. So that's saying... We understand that as of a rate cut, the market typically performs well. Now, here's some more information that I wrote for y'all that I got for y'all, right? Watch this. I wanted to show us something, right? I wanted to show us something. Let's check the stats. Again, we analytical from the perspective of data helps us understand how the market moves. We understand how the market moves. So let's just look at this from 2008 to 2024, Let's look at what the market has done, right? From 2008, it gave us a minus 38%, right? That's a whole year. Now, watch this. 2009, it gave us 23%. 2010, it gave us 12.78%. 2011, bad, not a bad year, but 0.08%, not even a whole percent. Came back 2012 and gave us 13%. 2013, gave us 26%. 2014, it gave us 11%. 2015, almost 1%. That's right at three quarters of a percent. 2016, it gave us 9%. 2017, it gave us 19%. 2018, minus 16%. Pandemic, watch this. 2019, 20, and 21, it gave us 28%, 16%, 26%. 2022 is when we started trapping tools. It gave us minus 19%. We beat the market by 16%. 2023, last year, it gives us 24%. We did 31%. 2024, right now, we're at 20%. We up 45%. So what I'm telling you is between 2008 and 2024, the market has only given you three bad years, which means about 70-some percent of the time, the market does what? Go up. Let me show you something. This is why I use the VOO as my savings account since 2017. So 2017, I got 19% on my bread. 2018, I lost a little money. But what did I do? Kept buying, it's reinvested. 2019, it gave me 28%. 2021, it gave me 26%. 2022, it took 19%, but 2023, it gave me 24%. I'm up again. I'm reinvesting the dividends, and it just keep buying me more. So I'm outperforming anything I would have put inside my savings account, which no matter if the market is up or down, only gives me 3% if it's in a high yield, 0, 0.0 something is in a regular savings account. I hope I'm making sense right now. Let's take a minute to just process the data. Because the data, your aggression should only come when you understand the data. So we go back, we understand a few things. We understand that. We gave the blueprint last week of when we should be buying. We understood which month. If you don't know, go back and look at last week's episode. We talk about September being a bad month. We talk about uh, August, we're supposed to be peeling back, but we know this year, August came a little early. It came the second, it came the third week of July. But the data also told us what? That the second week of July, the first two weeks of the July are the best two performing weeks of the year. This is data. 
This is data. So it tells us that in July, we shouldn't be getting in position. We should be already in position going into June to take advantage of July. And then August, we, go, we know we scale it back a little bit. September is the worst month in the market, which is when we should be doing what? Getting in position. So that we can take August, which does really, I mean, we can take October, which does pretty good, but November, December does better. January scales back a little bit, but still does good. February do good. March, April, we understand this. And so when we understand how the market typically works, we can take the guessing out of the market and start positioning ourselves for months at a time. Now, somebody say, Trap, should I be positioning myself for March right now? I'm like, you don't even know what these, uh, October, November, December going to look like. How are you going to position for March way now? If you're trying to position yourself for March right now, you're not taking advantage of what's going on right now. Somebody said September has been pretty good this year, though. We already talked about that. We said, why is September good this year? Well, because we had an early July that really went bad, and we had a whole August that went bad. So if you have July and August that goes really bad, it's kind of hard to think September going to go that bad, too, especially when you have CPI numbers that did well, PPI numbers that did well, retail numbers that did well, and a Fed rate cut that did well by 50%. It's almost impossible for the market to go well when you got so much momentum going forward. So that's about saying, let me look at the data, but also, watch this, there's not one thing. Let me look at the data, but also let me realize what's going on in the moment that can shift the data, which is why we made plays in the beginning of September, because we said what? Yo, the CPI numbers came out good. The PPI numbers came out good. Retail numbers came out good. Let's get in position in three plays before the rate hike, which I felt like they were going to give us 50%. I mean, half a percent. We got the half a percent. We said it's going to offset quad winching. So far, this is what happened. And remember, the market is ran by human beings. And it's human nature to be greedy. Somebody said the election year, too. Well, we know that 85% of the time the on the election year, the market is positive. Well, we was at 21%. We gave a stat for that already, right? What, what was the stat for that? On the election year, the market usually gives us about 21%. Well, we got 21% going into July. What was the stat behind that? The stat said that when you get a 21, when a 18% or better, when you get 18% or better going into the, excuse me, the second half of the year, you're going to look for a 9% decline, but the market still will give you like another 8% to close out the year. So we already understood that. So we said, okay, it's July, y'all. We are above 17%, so we should be looking for that 9% pullback at some point in time. When did we get that? Second half, second half of July and August. The data didn't lie to us. The data did what? The data painted the picture that it said it was going to do. So we got the pullback in July, and then we came back with another set of stats that said we usually get this, we usually get this many 3% pullbacks a year, we get this many 3 to 5% pullbacks, we get this many 5 to 10% pullbacks, we get this many 10 to 15% pullbacks, we get this many 20% pullbacks a year. We already laid the data out for us. But it's our job not to just come in a trap and tutors and listen, it's our job to take notes so that we can be in position when the market starts doing what it does. Somebody said the uh, election year 2008, the market, only, the market gave us negative 38%. That's only three terms ago. Well, that goes into what? The 85% category. It never said 100%. It said 85% of the time, which means the market doesn't always repeat itself, but it rhymes. So if 85% of the chance you're going to get a double-digit return in the election year, that says you should be aggressive, but there is a 15% chance that the market will go negative. It never said 100%. It never said 100%. The only thing that's 100% in the market is one day you're going to lose some money. That's 100%. You're going to lose some money. That's the only thing that's 100%. It ain't 100% that you're going to make some money. It's 100% you're going to lose some money.